Welcome to In the Spotlight. I'm Eric Townell. Our series on youth arts education continues today with our guest, John Viavatny. John is a woodwind specialist, director of bands, and director of the Jazz One Jazz Band at uh, Spenceport High School. Welcome, John. Thank you so much Thanks for, for coming. Thanks for having in. us, Eric. It's great. And you brought some guests with you today? I did. I brought uh, my tennis saxophonist, Jackson Glozer, and my lead trumpet player, Raymond Richards. Jackson and Raymond. Yes. Well, welcome here, Thank trumpet you. player and sax player. Ah, that's phenomenal. So the Jazz One uh, Jazz Band is an uh, award winning ensemble. Yes, it is. We're very blessed. We have a bunch of very dedicated, talented students, and uh, we travel couple times a year to festivals and competitions and, and we do very well and we hold our own. Oh, that's fantastic. And is it a classic big band? Yes, it is. It is a classic big band with a little twist here and there. We do have some flutes in the band to <laughs> enhance the sound. Uh -huh. And uh, when we have those charts that require that kind of doubling, we uh -huh. have that in the band ready to go. And uh, But uh, yes, it's a 20-piece big band. 20-piece big band. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, you're a woodwind and saxophone player yourself. Yes, very active. Uh, I'm blessed. I get to be able to teach and play as well. So I perform uh, with the main group I play with is, are the Mambo Kings. Mambo Kings. So uh -huh. I play a lot of saxophone and flute with them. Uh -huh, that's phenomenal. Yeah. And so are you teaching the students privately uh, that join your jazz band? or? I. I have in the past. Uh -huh. I'm just so busy that uh, uh -huh. traveling and gigging that uh -huh. I don't any longer. Uh -huh. But I used to do that in the summers. I would do that. Oh, I see. That's, yeah. that's great. And so, um, Jackson and Raymond, um, how long have you been in the band? Four years. Yeah, Four we, years. we both joined our freshman year. So you're seniors now? Yeah. Oh, boy. Looking on to uh, great futures in music, maybe? Not, I don't think <laughs> either of us is a major, but we're definitely going to keep playing. And, uh -huh. Yeah. So what has playing in an ensemble like uh, Jazz One brought for you? It's been, it's been a great experience. You know, it's really enriched my life musically and non-musically in all, all ways. You know, it's taught me responsibility, taught me how to improvise and, you know, think on my feet more. Uh -huh. um, definitely taught me how to be a better person and, you know, really listen to music and experience uh -huh. it more. Mm -hmm. And Raymond, how about you? It instills a lot of discipline, that's for sure. That's for sure. Every day, got to work on our charts, got to work on our soloing, everything. A lot of great relationships, too. It's, a, it's right. one big family. That's yeah. one part that I cherish quite a bit. There's nothing like a brass ensemble in big band. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Now, are you the high trumpet player? Yes, sir. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's, that's real life. Yeah, that's real life. And Jackson, what saxophone do you play? Tenor. Tenor sax, uh-huh. Yeah. Now, do you work on the other instruments as well? Yeah, I do. I play alto, soprano. Mm -hmm. I can play all of them pretty much. Yeah. You ever try that flute thing? No, I've <laughs> never tried that flute thing. I mean, it's got the same holes, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, did I understand you're going on to school at RIT? Yeah. yeah. So uh, is that going to be an engineering focus for you? No, I'm, I'm actually going for uh, imaging science and photography. Imaging science and photography. I wonder how a music background helps you prepare for something like that. It's more a creative field, so you know you can be more creative with your music. It's not jazz, especially, is not so black and white. You can step out and do a lot of different things mm -hmm. and put yourself out there. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. And how about you, Raymond? What's your? I will be uh, going to university at Buffalo, biomedical sciences major. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. A lot of doctors are uh, musicians. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of. And so the science a aspect is real strong for you. Yep, and the cooperation aspect of the people, too. There's a Absolutely. whole lot of social aspects to both of those. And that's right. really important. And the discipline. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, you know, now do you study privately in, outside of school, for instance? or? Yeah, I, I study at a Eastman with a Doug Stone. Mm -hmm. He's a, a local tenor player, a saxophone player. Mm -hmm. And I've been taking lessons with him for a few years now. Mm -hmm. And I, I took lessons with uh, Mr. B in the past summers a few times. And mm -hmm. Yeah. You're studying privately? I'm actually not studying privately right now. I just do a lot of my own listening at home and mm -hmm. work on stuff so that, for the most part. That's, that's such an interesting point. Do you teach them a lot to listen? What style? Oh, are yes. Uh -huh. That's the bridge between me and them. Uh -huh. Because I can teach them all the, all the theory, but uh -huh. if they're not listening, then it's not going to absorb into their soul. And in fact, we have weekly listening assignments, right? Yep. <laughs> and absolutely. I give them parameters, you know, like the first probably 10 or more weeks of school, you can't listen to any jazz later than 1965. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask <laughs> yeah. you, is anybody listening to that old jazz anymore? Yeah, well, that's, that's the, what I consider like the, the late 50s, early 60s. That's what these kids need to be listening to. And, and you can hear it in their playing. It's, it's so awesome. 
-hmm. It really is. Every one of the kids in the band solos. Every one of them. Is that right? Absolutely. By solo, you mean? Improvisation. Improvisation. Yep. So yep. you have to understand? You have to understand chord progression. You have to understand harmony. You have to understand form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very intellectual. But yet, like Jackson said, it's very freeing as well. It's very creative. And you can express yourself unlike classical music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. true. And now, what's the instruction path for that? Uh, do they learn uh, improvisation in a formal way? Well, we have what we call sectionals outside of the, the regular big band rehearsal. Uh -huh. So that's where we get together and we work on improv, we work on our, our sectional parts, if there's a tough soli in one of the things. <laughs> so, yeah. So that uh -huh. gives us a little flexibility to break away from the big band and work in small groups. Oh, I see. So who's your saxophone hero? Uh, Dexter Gordon. Dexter Gordon. Well, let's see. Yeah, another classic. Mm -hmm. And do you play metal mouthpiece? No, I, I'm actually I'm looking at one right now. <laughs> Are you okay? We're just on the drive over here talking about mouthpieces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the see. Okay. Yeah. And so um, now, are you in the wind ensemble as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. You enjoy classical music, playing classical? Not quite as much as jazz, but yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. That improv element is missing. Right, jazz, mm -hmm. something else, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, do you find much crossover between the jazz band and the uh, concert band? Absolutely, absolutely. I stress the classical playing and being able to play a, a good classical solo because that's where you gain your technique and that's where you gain some of your musicianship, most of it. Mm -hmm. To be able to express yourself, if you have an idea in your head and you can't get it out through your horn, um, that's a problem. But with, with the classical end, they learn their technique and they're, they're able to get around on their instruments and uh, become more well-rounded jazz musicians. And right, right, many of the rudiments are the same. Exactly. And a lot of the jazz sonorities end up in the modern classical music. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, it's so interesting to me, when jazz is created, is it written down and, you know, are you reading notation and what's the process there? Well, it's funny you mention that because once in a while I'll, I'll put on a video for the kids um, and one I put on, it was from an early, early Count Basie uh, video, and they're playing along, and I, it's in black and white, and I asked the kids, now, what's missing from this video? And they could, they're like, hmm, they're looking for instruments, what? There was no music. So, it tells you right there. Yeah. That's what jazz is. That's, that's jazz. what jazz is. Yeah. So, it's, it's pretty, pretty awesome. And they they buy into it as well. They're really students of this genre. They really are away from me. Um, I try to, you know, hands off, especially for like the combo. Jackson is the facilitator and the leader of our jazz combo. Uh -huh. uh, when they do gigs, they just go out and do them. Like we just played uh, Fairport Canal Days. Oh my. And uh, mm -hmm. he gets up there with the group and he announces the tunes, he announces the personnel, yes. talks to the, the audience, and I just get to Relax and listen. <laughs> <laughs> now, how about the technology aspect? I mean, in any live performance now, there's so much technology. Yeah. Well, they have to know about, you know, keyboards and amps yeah. and, you know, troubleshoot things and <laughs> recording techniques. Uh, we recorded last year at uh, a CD at Linden Oak Studios. Oh, did you? And, uh, boy, talking about an experience yep. and an education. Yep. That yep. was awesome. Yeah, that room over there is amazing. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's really at, uh, operating at a very high professional level already. Yes, absolutely. You didn't happen to bring that CD with you, did you? Absolutely did. <laughs> well, let's hear some music. What did you bring? Well, we brought, a, uh, we brought, brought the record that we recorded last year, and we're going to be listening to uh, a couple of tracks. The first one is... Uh, Cherokee. Yeah, Cherokee. Yeah. We're oh, going to listen yeah. to Cherokee, and um, it features an, uh, our alto player last year who was a senior, who has now f just finished up his first year at North Texas State, or University of North Texas, as they call it, oh, yeah. in the jazz program there, oh, and that is world-renowned. Yes, program. it is. So we're very proud of Eric Stein, uh -huh. and uh, that's the first track on our record. Okay, well, let's hear a little bit of that. So a balance, blend, and intonation, like any good choir. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You can hear all the parts. And all things. the musical elements uh, have to be 
done first before you can start interpreting any style. Uh -huh. So that's pretty straight up jazz. Uh, is that representative of your repertoire, pretty much? We can play. We play anything. Like, really? The, yeah. I mean, we play swing. We play funk. We play some ballads. We play bossa nova. Uh -huh. We play some Latin. Uh huh. Yeah. So really, the full styles. Absolutely. In fact, the CD has, uh, I think, a lot of diversity on it. We have uh, uh, the big band with a, with our vocal jazz group, one of the tracks. Oh, vocal We have jazz. our big band with a vocal soloist as one of the tracks. Excellent. And we have our jazz combo as one of the. And, and can people uh, find these CDs to purchase? Absolutely. <laughs> How absolutely do they do that? <laughs> can. You can uh, email me at jvivotny uh, at spencerportschools.org. Okay. And um, I will be happy to send you or them a copy. Does Jazz One have its own website or a web presence on Spencerport Schools? Or um, can we learn we about do for Evening of Jazz. When our Evening of Jazz is coming, mm -hmm. uh, one of our parents uh, put something on. But as far as getting in touch, uh, you can get in, get in touch with us through our music boosters, uh -huh. uh, Spencerport Music Association. That's a good and idea. that's on the website. Uh -huh. So tell me about uh, Evening of Jazz. I noticed the t-shirts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very sharp. So, did you play on that? Oh, yeah, we did. It's a great time. We usually invite an artist in and uh -huh. a solo with us. Yeah, uh -huh. it's quite the show. Where do you hold it? It's right in our own school. It's in our, our school. Yeah, yeah, we turn our cafeteria into sort of a, a jazz club. Oh. And put a stage on the put a stage there and backdrops and yeah. tables and yeah. Oh, is that fun? And what kind of music did you play? All different stuff. The last year we had a Conrad Herwig uh, trombone player, uh -huh. Grammy nominated, and he, he does a lot of um, the Latin side. He, like <laughs> we played a t uh, the Latin side of Herbie Hancock, a tune. We, so some of his writings and he, he'll get up there and play his stuff with us and then we'll have some stuff that we've been working on he'll play with us. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. awesome. Awesome. And uh, do the students write their own charts, too? Uh, maybe music. in a small group setting. Not for the big band, though, big to band. be honest with you. No. I think they'll experiment with, uh, and that's when, when I was Trump saying my hands are off. Sometimes they feel a lot more uh, free to uh -huh. create when I'm just not there. You know, so I, I, with the combo, I pull way back, because, and they're, they're well run and disciplined and productive. And sometimes they'll just experiment with some grooves or some chord progressions and create, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, that's so great. Mm -hmm. And uh, the evening of jazz, if people are watching for that, does that come up every year? It does. We, it's an annual event. It's not always the same date, but I do have the date for 2019. It's March 23rd okay. next year at Spencerport High School. Wonderful. We're still working on an artist. Uh huh. But uh, it's, it's a blast. The, when the artist comes in, they, you know, these, they're world-renowned artists and oh, we're so man. blessed to have them come in. Oh boy. You know, we've had everybody from Eric Marienthal to Randy Brecker to oh, Bill Evans. Yeah. That's the shirt they're wearing there. Uh -huh. That was Bill Evans a couple of years ago. My oh my. And, uh, oh, big yeah, names. Yeah. Big good names. stuff. Mm -hmm. And you've worked out personally with some of the biggest names in the industry. I was yes, I've been very blessed. I was on the road with the Glenn Miller Orchestra for about two and a half years. So got to travel the world. Got to see places I normally wouldn't see. Oh my! And uh, played for a president, oh uh, inaugural ball, President Reagan. Uh -huh. And uh, oh yeah, I worked with everybody from Ray Charles to the Temptations, the Steve Gadd, Gap, and Chuck Mangione. It's just been an awesome ride. Really, a, a wild spectrum. Yes, uh -huh. that's fantastic. Now uh, we have time for one more cut. What do, what do you have uh, for us? Let's play Jackson's cut. If the engineer can bring up track four. Okay, sure. This is a feature for Jackson. It's called Midnight Voyage. Oh, fantastic. Yeah.
Simon, who's your trumpet hero? I'd go with Arturo Sandoval. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good choice. Sure. <laughs> uh, there's a Latin musician for you. Yeah. So uh, did that uh, Mambo Kings connection influence your your? Oh, yeah. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I got into Arturo freshman year, and he just really started my listening uh -huh. to jazz a lot more. Yeah. Uh -huh. We actually got to, a few of the trumpets from our school got to go uh, hear him talk at uh, Greece. I don't know which Greece school it was, but... Yeah, yeah, like 2014. Yeah, that's, that's quite the experience. That, that's exciting. Yeah, that's exciting stuff. Now, uh, do you ever hear this guy named Maynard Ferguson? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you like that music? Absolutely, yeah. yeah it's a little yeah. dated now sounding, isn't it? Yeah. Like it's <laughs> never gets old. <laughs> never gets old. Uh -huh. It's timeless. That's great. And so uh, how much of the Latin influence uh, sneaks into the Spencerport program? It really helps me in my teaching of that music because it's boy when i first got on board with the mambo kings i was searching for one for you know beat one as they call it uh, -huh. uh because the uh the rhythm section is a, a, not as conventional as say a, what we would think of as a, even a jazz combo there's not really a drum set player there's more latin percussion right and uh with that and the bass mm -hmm. you really have to be on your toes and i can now be able to convey these concepts to the kids uh -huh. and it helps us play absolutely more authentically. And so now, um, if for people not familiar with Mambo Kings, tell us a little bit about that ensemble. Well, we are um, a five-piece group and we play as a five-piece group uh -huh. and uh, we play a lot of original music. Um, our leader and creator of the group, Richard Delaney, does a lot of the writing. And, but we also play with symphony orchestras. My. And we travel all over the country and, and Canada. And usually Jeff Tyzik will conduct for us. Mm -hmm. And Richard writes all the charts my, for my. orchestra and the group. Fantastic. Yeah, it's really a great experience. Mm -hmm. And well received. Yeah. And we get to play with orchestras like Detroit, Dallas, Vancouver, my. Tampa. Yeah. Oh boy! Is there? Um, did you bring a, a little sample? I of did bring a, a one of our. It's actually our first record we oh, did. Congratulations! Yeah, so here maybe it is. we should uh, hear a little of that. Sure. Okay. What cut uh, would you suggest for that one? Well, this is the this is it right here. I don't know if the engineer has it back there, okay. um, but track one's fine. Okay. Softly as in a morning sunrise. Nice playing, John. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank Sounds you. Just great. Thank you. Mambo uh, Kings is very exciting. I've heard them around uh, Rochester. In fact, you've played the Xerox Rochester International Jazz Festival. Yes, we have. Yes, mm -hmm. we have. That's exciting. Any other uh, things on the horizon for the band? That you just a couple of summer things, uh, local, and uh, start back up with the orchestra season in October. Oh, that's exciting! Yes. Lots of travel then. Yes. So tell me about the future of jazz education now. Uh, where do students make their careers once they graduate and that sort of thing? Well, there are more opportunities than ever now to to have a, a career profession in music, and it's specifically for jazz. There's uh, opportunities for jazz education. Uh, the recording industry is very big. The music uh, business industry is very big. And for students to have that background of being jazz players, I think it'll help them cross over and move into other genres and make them credible as producers, recording engineers, and as well as musicians. And how do you find uh, the uh, working with YouTube and that sort of thing, where people make their careers that way now? Yes, absolutely. YouTube mm -hmm. is priceless. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I used to have to drop the needle on the record to transpi transcribe a solo. Yeah. And now the kids just cue it up and they're ready to go. And where did you uh, grow up, John? Are you? I actually lived in Penfield, but <laughs> went to Webster Schools. OK. Yeah, so <laughs> right around the corner is where I lived. Uh -huh. Rafa Embury Road, and uh, yeah, I had a good uh, foundation. Both my parents were very supportive. My mom played piano, oh. and uh, we were very lucky, very blessed to have excellent teachers. Um, Chuck Mangione, was, when he was still at Eastman, would come to the house and give my brother Bob trumpet lessons, 
And he started me on clarinet. No kidding. And uh, he said, you know what, kid, I can't take you any further on clarinet. Let me, let me give you to this guy I know. His name was Joe Romano. Oh. So that's how my love affair with the saxophone started. Uh. <laughs> Joe would come to the house, give me some saxophone lessons, and uh, I studied with Jerry Nywood, and, uh, who played later with Chuck. And um, just very, very fortunate. Oh, that's exciting. Any uh, future video plans for Mambo Kings? Are you making... We just did a photo shoot. We're in an, into a new project. Um, when I was speaking about Jeff Tyzik, Jeff's daughter, Jamie, actually mm -hmm. manages us. Oh, through, no uh, kidding. Yes, through Greenberg Artists in New York City. Uh -huh. And uh, one of their uh, stable of artists is Camille Zamora. And um, that's actually the package we did with the RPO last season. And Camille is a wonderful singer, and we just did a photo shoot with her uh, promoting this new package. I see. Mm -hmm. And Jamie is a singer herself, actually. Yes, yeah, she yeah. is. <laughs> that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very exciting. So it's just interesting to think about, um, you know, what's on the horizon for uh, jazz and, um, you know, different kinds of genres of music that people are playing these days mm -hmm. and, and where it might lead. So what do you think about that, and where are you headed with your own work? I think this is a question for the boys because they list, they bring things to me. Uh -huh. They go, Mr. V, check this out. And they listen to people I've never even heard of. Oh and, my. and when I hear it, it's like so groundbreaking and awesome. So, guys. Yeah. Yeah, I listen to a lot of different stuff. You know, I listen to Dexter. I listen to the Sonny Rollins, <coughs> all the old guys like that. You know, I, I listen to some, some newer sort of... Again, indie, some funk bands. There's a, a really cool band called Wolfpack. Wolfpack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'll look that up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a cool sort of a funk band. They have some soul soul singers and stuff. And uh -huh. They're pretty cool. Yeah. And where are you learning about these? Uh, just off of friends. You know, I see I see some songs that's on Spotify and stuff. I listen uh -huh. to and uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And Raymond, what are you hearing these Along days? Along the same lines, our, our piano player Trevor has got great taste. Oh, I see. Kind of, <laughs> our uh, our uh, jazz ear kind of finds its way into what we're listening to for modern stuff, too. A lot of those Wolfpack, uh, Moonchild, uh -huh. very kind of jazz fusion with modern stuff. It's very interesting. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that is yeah. interesting. Ever try writing tunes yourself? Not really. Uh, not really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Much easier to listen. Yeah. yeah but I agree with that. Yeah, that's, that's fun. Well, that's so exciting. Well, I think we have uh, one more track to play. And Great. What was the name of this one? Though, this track is called Tutu, written okay. by Marcus Miller, the great bassist, and uh, bass clarinetist as well. But uh, Miles Davis made this famous. He, they performed this when Marcus was with Miles. Uh -huh. So this is called Tutu. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> That's quite a modern funky one. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> That's a deep groove right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's so great. And so do you have a team of people working with you on the jazz band? Uh, as far as educators? Yes. Uh, I have a colleague that works with me, Ben Osborne, and he's a, a low brass professional, so he does our brass and our percussion education over there, which frees me up to do the woodwind and uh, all the fun stuff. Uh, that's great. Upper level ensembles. <laughs> you yeah. do the wind ensemble. I do. I Rochester's do. a big wind ensemble town. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we have a lot of fun. And that, again, is an award-winning group. Um, we're very blessed. All the kids are buy into it 100%. Uh -huh. And uh, we always score well when we go to competition, uh -huh. and, they, and they sound great. Mm -hmm. Go to competition, too. Yes, we do. And does uh, Jazz One compete as well? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. So tell me about some of the recent successes there. Well, we, we went to Boston this year, and yep. uh, we finished first, got a gold rating. My, my. And uh, 
took a lot of hardware home. I think we took six uh, trophies home yeah. this year. <laughs> yeah. And those are for soloists as well as the yes, ensemble work. Yeah, huh? aside from the large trophies, we get solo awards as well as they're recognized within a performance. And uh, how about alums of the program? Have you seen any go on to great success? Somebody Actually, one of our former keyboard players, we were just talking about this on the way over, uh, Steve Basil, he's playing right now with uh, a rapper by the name of uh, Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you never know. I <laughs> that's mean, right. And that's why, you know, it's really important to give these kids as much as you can to give them some diverse experiences um, so they don't become one-dimensional as musicians. Mm -hmm. That's very important. And classical music is a big, big part of that as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And how about the vocalist? Who's training the uh, vocalists? And vocalist is a colleague by the name of Laura Mance, uh -huh. and she's excellent. I see. And our vocal jazz group is really tops. Yeah, music education is so important to youth these days. It, it builds a lot of skills in a lot of different areas. I mean, what kind of crossover do you see with other things they're studying, for instance? Well, specifically in jazz, yeah. what makes jazz different mm -hmm. is the art of improvisation. Right. And we all need to learn to improvise, whether you're playing music or whether you're a doctor. It's really that important. And for, like Raymond, I think, uh, referred to, it, being able to think on your feet. Mm -hmm. And we all need to do that in life. Right. And music helps that. It helps with the discipline. Mm -hmm. It helps with being a team player. It helps with preparation. It helps with being able to put yourself out there like these two are, speaking with people audiences right. and being comfortable with that mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's so valuable for life skills it really is and I've certainly found that in, in my own life and uh, so if a parent is starting out with a youngster what do you recommend as first steps you had a personal mentor and a very good one yes mm -hmm. and you had parents coaching you but if not that's not the situation what do you recommend well we recommend that if, if, a, if a student is interested in music or if they need to be interested in music, <laughs> then it's the teacher's job. We right. need to recruit. We need to make sure at the young level mm -hmm. that they have a way harder job than I do. Our elementary teachers, they do a great job. Yes, when uh -huh. you're talking about trying to get a 10-year-old to be able to be interested, practice, and carry through mm -hmm. the techniques to get better, and to see that progress. And uh, are they feeding you students with the basic uh, skills and then you take it from there? Exactly right. Uh -huh. Yep, at each grade level there's a, an expectation uh -huh. of progression. So by the time they get to us, we can do what we are able to do. That's great. Well, John, thank you so much for coming in the spotlight. Jackson, Raymond, thank thanks you. so much for thank joining us. And we have thank just you. time enough to go out on a little bit more of Tutu, so thanks for being my guest in the spotlight. Thank, thank you. It's great to have you here. Thank you.